or an authentic carbonara, absolutely no cream. If ever there was a pasta dish that reminds me of the year that I lived in Italy, pasta carbonara is that. And I didn't realize just how controversial it is. So April the 6th is National Carbonara Day where they celebrate this dish and there are so many different variations and then there are the purists and I'm somewhere in between. So I'm going to show you my California adaptations of this dish simply because where I am it's really hard to get guanciale. Guanciale is cured pork jowl, so the pork cheek. So I use pancetta and pancetta is a little bit more dry than guanciale. So if I need a little bit more fat, I put in some olive oil and I'm gonna use a smoked olive oil from Quail and Olive today just because I love that flavor profile. But in any case, carbonara is just a few ingredients, spaghetti and eggs, the guanciale or pancetta, grated cheese. So Americans often use um, Parmesan, but the traditional and what I like to get is Pecorino Romano. And that is a sheep's cheese, sheep's milk cheese grated. The other thing I love about this is it takes just a few minutes. So in the time that the, it takes for the pasta to boil, this comes together. I'm gonna bring the water back up to a boil and I'm gonna put eight ounces. So this is for four servings. I'm gonna put eight ounces of pancetta into a pot or a pan. So one of the reasons that this dish reminds me of Rome, besides being a quintessentially Roman pasta dish, was that this was a dish that Maria made for me. Um, she also worked for the same family that I worked for, and for Carnivale, which is the day before Lent, or I guess it was the Sunday before Lent, she invited me over to her house, and Carnivale literally means goodbye meat. So they take all of the meat that they happen to have in their house at the time and they cook it all. So we had a very decadent, delicious, carnivorous feast and this pasta carbonara was one that she made. Now I don't know if that's something that they typically make in Carnivale or if she was making it for me to show me this traditional Roman dish. But I have a lot of great memories of this, of that whole day with her family. They actually cooked in a huge fireplace over a wood-burning fire. So all the meats that were roasted, this pasta sauce, uh, it was just a really wonderful way to spend a Sunday. So the pan is nice and hot. We're gonna get that to render the fat and the um, pancetta. Uh, my water is back up to a boil, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the pasta in. And it is salted water, but no oil. And I'm using about 450 grams of pasta. So in the time that it's gonna take that pasta to cook, this sauce will be done as well. So it's super fast. This is a mostly traditional Roman presentation, which means that it's the meat, the guanciale or pancetta, eggs, pecorino, pasta, and black pepper, and that's it. They don't use any salt when they're serving this, mainly because the cured meat is pretty salty and there is salt in the water for the pasta. And a couple of cardinal rules for an authentic carbonara, absolutely no cream. I know a lot of Americans add cream because they think that that's what's in the sauce, but I'm gonna show you how Romans make that creamy texture and creamy flavor without any dairy products whatsoever. Well, there's the cheese, of course, but no cream in the sauce. So again, this is for four servings, 400 grams of pasta. Typically you want to use one egg per 100 grams for this recipe. My eggs were small, so I went ahead and put five eggs. And some people say that this recipe should only use the egg yolk, but the reason I use the whole egg is because one of the tenants in Italian um, cooking for me is that they don't waste anything. So I just, can't imagine that they would only use the yolk and discard the whites for this recipe. So I use the whole egg. And I'm just gonna gently whisk that up, start whisking those yolks together. And this is the basis of the sauce. So the only really tricky part to this recipe is that once you pour the eggs into the pasta, you have to move pretty quickly so that you don't get scrambled eggs. And trust me, I have done that as well. But I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks 
so that you can get that creamy, delicious pasta carbonara that you probably are looking for. So I will put all of the ingredients and proportions in a recipe in the description box below, but um, five eggs and then about um, four cups of grated pecorino. Now, I love Parmesan grated over the top of my pasta and I will serve the pasta with Parmigiano for people to grate over the top, but the cheese that goes in the sauce is pecorino. So you want that pancetta to render all of its fat and get, um, some bits are gonna get nice and crispy, others are just going to be slightly browned. But I do try and keep moving it around so I don't scorch the meat. So while that pancetta is cooking, I'm just going to take those egg yolks that I've beaten and I'm going to mix in the pecorino, the shredded pecorino, and then a generous amount of freshly ground black pepper. And when I say generous, it's sort of to your taste, but at least a teaspoon, maybe more, and then you do add more on the top when you serve it. This sauce I sort of go by smell, and I want when you breathe in that sauce, you want to get that nice hit of black pepper up your nostrils. <laughs> okay, so you can see that the pancetta is browning nicely. This is uh, still a little too dry for me to make my sauce. So I'm just gonna let it cook a little bit and then I'm gonna add in probably about a tablespoon of that smoked olive oil but we're getting there. And then I'm gonna turn the heat off on that pancetta. So here's one of those tricks that I learned from Maria that I'm gonna share with you. You can see that that sauce, the egg and the pecorino is still really chunky. So you take a ladle full of the pasta cooking water. And you just whisk that in. And that's just gonna help emulsify this sauce. It's gonna melt the cheese. It's gonna make that nice and creamy. See what I mean about it being fast? So the pasta cooking time was 13 minutes. I started this process when I put the pasta in and set the timer for 13 minutes. And we still have four minutes and we're ready for that to do the final steps. So we are good. This is a great weeknight recipe. A little bit more black pepper. So pasta is one of my favorite meals to make. You can ask my family, I make pasta all the time. Part of it is that I learned to cook when I lived and worked in Rome. So that's my go-to. I would love to hear what your favorite pasta dish is. So leave me a comment below and if it's not something that I've tried or that I have a video of, I will probably try and make it. So the other thing about making this dish that helps to not scramble those eggs, because you don't want them scrambled at all, is that you're cooking this with the residual heat from the pasta and the pancetta, but the heat and the burner is completely off by the time we get to this stage. Okay, so when you've gotten to the point where the pasta is done, you're just gonna take that pasta out of the water and put it straight into the pan with the pancetta or the guanciale. You're just going to toss that pasta with that oil from the bottom of the pancetta. You're just gonna turn that pasta until it's nice and glossy. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more water, like half a ladle, maybe a full ladle. And that is also gonna help keep the eggs from coagulating or scrambling. And you're just gonna pour that in And you're going to turn it. So again, it's not a lot of heat. You see the cheese chunks. You're just going to keep turning it. But you can see the sauce over here is nice and creamy. I'm just going to keep stirring that in. So when Maria took me to her house, my job was actually to stir this so that the eggs didn't scramble. And I remember her yelling, she wasn't yelling. Italians and Romans can be very 
emotive and loud. I just remember her telling me, um, Chintajiri, Camila, Chintajiri, which means a hundred turns. So I was supposed to turn the pasta a hundred times, and then that would indicate that the pasta was completely coated and done. I haven't been counting. I never count. I just sort of go by looks. And what I want is I want that pasta to be nicely coated and glossy, but also creamy. That You can see that creaminess in the pot. Okay, we are ready to serve. So I can see why a lot of people think that there's cream added to this dish, but as I showed you, there's not. It's just eggs and cheese and that oil from the pancetta. You just want to give it some nice grinds of black pepper. Yes, more with the black pecker. And then I do have a little bit more of the pecorino. So I'm going to put that on top. And there you have it. A mostly traditional pasta carbonara from Rome, straight from Rome, made by a Californian. My favorite pasta dish. Now where's my fork? If you like this video, please click like and hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. That takes me back to Rome. <laughs>